In this video, we're going to talk about how to prove angle relationships. So we're first going to check this out by looking at an example. Um, and it's going to give us a picture, and it's going to give us some information. It says, to find the measure of angle 1, if the measure of angle 2 is 56 degrees, and the measure of angle JKL is equal to 145 degrees. So we know for a fact that the entire angle this guy right here is worth 145 degrees. We also know that the measure of angle 2 is 56 degrees. So this is what I'm looking for, angle 1, so I'm going to make that my x. And based on our angle addition postulate, I know that the sum of angles 1 and 2 should equal the entire angle, which is 145 degrees. So we're going to make an equation out of that. So before I use the numbers, I'm going to actually write it out with my angles. So the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 equals the measure of angle JKL. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to substitute all of those measurements with what I know. Just like so. So x plus 56 degrees is equal to 145 degrees. How would I solve this equation? So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to actually subtract out the 56, and that should solve my angle for the measure of angle 1, which is equivalent to 89 degrees. So that's all the angle addition postulate says. So next we're going to take a look at a proof. And this proof gives us three different pictures of angles. We have angle 1, 2, and 3. And the given information is that 1 and 2 are supplementary and angles 2 and 3 are supplementary. And they want us to prove that angle 1 is the same or congruent to angle 3. So before we start, we're going to make our t-charts for our two column proofs and get everything ready to go. So here we are, and of course, every single time we start proof, we always list the given information first. And I'm going to use some abbreviations here since I don't have too much room, but Angle 1 and angle 2 are supplementary, and angle 2 and angle 3 are supplementary. So there's my given information. What I'm going to do next is build off of my knowledge of what supplementary means. And supplementary just means that those two angles add up to 180 degrees. So I'm going to make each of these into their own equations. So angle 1 plus angle 2 equals 180, and angle 2 plus angle 3 equals 180. Just like so. And what would my reason be for this? Well, what did I build off of? I build off of my knowledge of what supplementary means. So this is going to be the definition of supplementary. So definition of supplementary angles. In case you haven't seen this before, this is my shorthand for angles, since that is the notation for an angle. And then I just put an apostrophe S, just to make sure that you understand. So the next thing I'm going to do is I take a look at my proof, and I notice that the sum of each pair of these angles is equivalent to the same measure. They're both equal to 180. So I'm actually going to substitute that 180 with a pair of those angles like this. So what am I going to put in place of this 180? Well, I'm going to put what this one is equal to, since they're the same exact thing. So this 180 is equal to the measure of angle 2 plus the measure of angle 3. And my reason for this is because they're equivalent to the same thing, I replaced them with what they were equal to, and that is substitution. So what do we have now? If I take a look at these two equations, let's make sure that we know where we're trying to go. Let's refresh our memory, go back up to our proof. We're trying to get angle 1 being congruent to angle 3. And if you look at where we are right now, I have the measure of angle 1 here, and I have the measure of angle 3 right here. They happen to have the measure of angle 2 in common. And what I'm going to do to get rid of that is subtraction. I'm going to subtract that measure of angle 2 from both sides so that I'm left with what I need. So there we go. We are almost all the way done. The last thing that I need to do is to get that equals to become a congruent symbol. And basically, if two measures have the same exact length or value, it means that they're congruent. So I can go ahead and make that equation into a congruent statement. And my reasoning here is based off of my knowledge of what congruence means. So this is definition of congruent. 
And that's it for this tutorial. And have a great day.